central diabetes insipidus, uh, also uh, abbreviated CDI, is the topic for uh, this video. And central diabetes insipidus is also sometimes known as neurogenic uh, diabetes insipidus. Now, keep in mind that this word insipidus uh, is different than mellitus. Uh, mellitus is the term that you're used to hearing about diabetes. That's the regular type of diabetes. This is insipidus, so this is different. So let's talk about CDI. Central diabetes insipidus is an issue uh, that involves uh, a hormone known as vasopressin. And vasopressin is also known as ADH, antidiuretic hormone. And this hormone is uh, uh, synthesized in the hypothalamus and it's uh, stored and released by the pituitary in the brain. And uh, before we talk about CDI, we need to talk a little bit about what does ADH actually do. So I'm going to draw here a diagram to help explain what ADH actually does in the body. So antidiuretic hormone, the hormone at the heart of this uh, medical condition. And this uh, diagram is a diagram of a nephron, which is the unit component of a kidney. There's millions of them in the nephron. And each of these uh, parts of the nephron has a certain name. And we're going to concentrate on this part here, uh, which is known as the collecting duct. And the collecting duct is where uh, the final parts uh, of the urine are um, determined. And what you excrete, of course, is your urine. But ADH works on this collecting duct and what does it do? It brings back water. So it brings back water into your bloodstream. And that is a fundamental uh, role of ADH. And when that happens, because water is coming back, the urine becomes more concentrated. So less water is in the urine because it's gone back into the bloodstream. Now, the condition CDI involves this not being present in adequate amounts. So when you don't have ADH in adequate amounts, either none or very little, this reabsorption of water does not happen. So instead of concentrated urine, you get very dilute urine. So what's happening is the water isn't coming back, isn't being reabsorbed into your bloodstream, it's actually being urinated out. So you get very dilute urine in CDI. So there's a term for that. Um, not only do you get very dilute urine, but you urinate a lot. And there's a term for that. It's called polyuria. And when a person has polyuria, you urinate a lot. The person will develop thirst and drink a lot of water. And when you drink a lot of water and have a lot of thirst, that is known as polydipsia. I would like to uh, give you some numbers to help make sense of this all. Um, otherwise, it becomes a little complicated, and it really shouldn't be too complicated to understand. So let me just uh, clean this up a little bit and give you some numbers. So the first number I'd like to give is, what is the urine osmolarity? normally in a normal person and the normal person the urine osmolarity is about 500 to 800 milli osmoles per liter okay and similarly the normal serum osmolarity is about 285 to 295 milli osmoles per liter. So why are these numbers important? Because this helps us decide how dilute something is or how concentrated it is. So let's give a simple example. Um, Water is coming back. Let's just draw a little blood vessel here. Okay. So this is your blood vessel. 
and this is of course the urine okay so a normal person let's say they've got a normal serum osmolarity I use uh, let's say use 290 and which is in this range and then their urine osmolarity let's just use 600 okay so now let's say you have um, a lot of ADH being released well that means a lot of water would be coming back and if a lot of water comes back the serum will become more dilute so if it becomes more dilute this number will go down so it would go down let's say to 280 let's say and if the serum becomes more dilute that means the urine becomes more concentrated so if the urine becomes more concentrated this number will go up it will go up to let's say let's just say 700 and the numbers are not really that important it's really the concept so now you have a system a scenario rather where the urine has become more concentrated and the serum has become more dilute now similarly the opposite can happen if you don't have ADH which is the condition as CDI which is this number would actually go higher because water is not coming back so the serum is actually becoming more concentrated so this number might be 300 let's say say 305 and because water we don't have ADH because of CDI central diabetes insipidus the urine will become more dilute because the water instead of coming back will be urinated out so this number might go down to let's say 400 very important to understand all that and I'll revisit that again when we look at the clinical vignettes so let's get into the symptoms well we mentioned the symptoms uh, very quickly but let's mention them again the first one is polyuria so these are the symptoms of CDI central diabetes insipidus so urinate a lot and polydipsia you're very thirsty and you're drinking a lot of water enormous quantities of fluid and um, that is the, the, the two main symptoms so then how do you diagnose it what are the main diagnostic tests there's two and I will explain these in further detail but at first I'll mention them there's a water deprivation test and what that means is in a controlled environment you deprive the patient of water for a few hours and you take uh, measurements of their urine and plasma osmolarity and the second one is um, you measure the ADH levels although this one is not usually done because this test is so accurate and so conclusive that you don't really need to do the second one so let's talk about the water deprivation test So what happens? Well, let's say you have a scenario where a patient comes in and they have polyuria, polydipsia. What you do then is you do something called a water deprivation test. And what that means is that you, you don't give them a anything uh, to drink for a few, a few hours. And during, those, during that time, you measure their urine and plasma osmolarities. Now, if after this test, the patients are able to increase their urine osmolarity, then that is something you have to specifically measure. So you're going to be measuring two things. You're going to measure the plasma osmolarity after let's say a few hours and you're going to measure the urine osmolarity normally what happens is when somebody is not given fluids for some hours um, the body responds by producing ADH but in CDI 
the body does not produce ADH. So what this water deprivation test does is that it fails to concentrate the urine. So let me explain what that means. Normally, if you are given this water deprivation test in a normal patient, the body will respond by producing ADH. And as we all know, ADH brings water back into the bloodstream. That will make the bloodstream more dilute. And if the bloodstream is more dilute, the urine is more concentrated. So normally, this water deprivation test would make urine more concentrated and the blood or plasma more dilute. And that's because normally you would have the body producing ADH in response to the water deprivation test. The, the body senses, hey, I'm not getting any water. I need to produce ADH so I can absorb as much water out of the urine as possible. But in CDI, what happens is ADH is not produced. So ADH is low. So the water deprivation tests fails to produce these results. You don't get more concentrated urine and you don't get more dilute plasma. The um, patient fails to concentrate their urine. So that is a very important aspect of diagnosing CDI. So how do you treat it? What's the treatment? Well, the treatment is actually uh, very straightforward. You give them ADH. Give ADH. And in particular, the drug is actually a, it's a synthetic analog of ADH. It's actually called desmopressin. They make this in the laboratory. And this is given to the patient um, it's given in various forms. Um, there's a nas intranasal solution, um, IV, oral, subcutaneous. And that's the treatment. So let's get into some clinical vignettes and gives you a better idea of what this is all about. So we have a 64-year-old man, has severe polyuria, polydipsia, drinking three to four glasses of water and producing over half a liter of urine each hour. A new internal medicine resident places the patient on an overnight water restriction test, and the test results are below which of the following is most likely diagnosis. Well, let's look at these um, uh, lab values. Remember, these lab values are after the water restriction test. So what's happened? The plasma sodium concentration is 155. A normal plasma sodium concentration is between 135 and 145. So this patient's plasma concentration shows a very high sodium. So that means it's very concentrated. So very concentrated uh, plasma. And then the urine osmolarity is 90. A normal uh, urine osmolarity is between 500 and 800. So this is obviously... Uh, a very dilute urine. So what's happened? Basically, when the water deprivation test occurred, the patient was unable uh, to produce ADH. Because normally, if uh, in a normal patient, the water restriction test, w w the body would respond by producing ADH to absorb as much water back into the bloodstream as possible and the blood would, uh, the plasma would be uh, either normal or maybe even a little dilute. But in this case, it stayed very concentrated because there was no ADH. So that's a classic example of CDI, central diabetes insipidus. Uh, next question. A 27-year-old female complains that she is constantly thirsty and that she has to urinate every two hours. Plasma, plasma osmolality is 295, and urine osmolality is 100. Part of the diagnostic workup, she is deprived of fluids for three hours. Her urine osmolality remains 100. One hour after injection of 
vasopressin, her urine osmolality becomes 400, which of the following is most likely diagnosis? Well, this is a two-step uh, uh, process. The first was that she was deprived of fluids and nothing happened, it, nothing changed. So the next thing that they did was they gave her vasopressin, which is also known as ADH, and her urine basically uh, went from being dilute to more concentrated. So that means the ADH that was given exogenously uh, helped her make her urine more concentrated. So that basically means that her kidneys responded to this exogenous um, ADH. So there's no doubt that she has diabetes insipidus, but which one is it? Is it nephrogenic or neurogenic? The difference between the two is that neurogenic, if you give ADH, the body responds. And nephrogenic, if you give ADH, the body does not respond. So in this case, after you give, after you gave the vasopressin, also known as ADH, her urine became 400, which is more uh, concentrated. So that shows that her kidneys did respond. So therefore, she's in this category. And the final one, a 40-year-old man with polyuria has urine osmolality of 50, uh, despite drinking a large amount of water. So this is actually a very dilute urine, um, despite drinking a large amount of water. His serum osmolality is 316, which is uh, pretty concentrated. Upon administration of vasopressin, which is ADH, serum osmolarity decreases to 285 and the urine osmolarity increases to 350. What is the most likely diagnosis? So what's happened here? You've given ADH and uh, the, the serum became more dilute. The serum went from 316 uh, to 285. So serum became more dilute, which is perfect because the ADH worked. It brought water back from the collecting duct into the bloodstream, making the serum more dilute. And what happened to the urine? Well, the urine went from 50 uh, to 350. So the urine actually became more concentrated, which is exactly what ADH does. So the answer to this will be central diabetes insipidus, also known as neurogenic.